classification of adverse reactions to food based upon the mechanisms involved uh, there are the first category is food intolerance as i just said it is a non immune mediated right food intolerance can further be because of two types first are related to host factors and second are related to the food products that you have ingested so first is related to host factors enzyme deficiencies suppose the host that is the person the child who developed allergies the child who developed this reaction he is not producing enzymes to digest a particular substance and so intolerance will develop because the digesting enzyme is absent so the typical example of that will be lactase deficiency it can be primary or secondary lactase deficiency we have sucrase isomaltase deficiency which has been discussed in pediatric gi part hereditary fructose intolerance which is a type of inborn error of metabolism and galactosemia which is again a enzyme deficiency leading to inborn error of metabolism second category includes git disorders which produce food intolerance we have irritable bowel disease like celiac disease we have inflammatory bowel disease like celiac disease very rarely they can be ulcerative colitis it can occur due to irritable bowel syndrome and it can occur due to pseudo obstruction third category of food intolerance is idiosyncratic reactions now you know already what the meaning is for those who uh, uh, have forgotten idiosyncratic reactions are those reactions which are not directly explained by the mechanism of action of a particular drug and they are not produced in all individuals so such type of uh, uh, reactions are called as idiosyncratic reactions the typical example of idiosyncratic reaction is when certain children they take caffeinated beverages it is not only tea and coffee which have caffeine in it if you look at a can of coke or you look at a can of pepsi you will find that they also contain caffeine in it all these uh, carbonated beverages like red bulls and all these uh, similar similar energy drinks they all contain caffeine in it so when caffeinated beverage is taken by most of the people they are usually normal but caffeinated beverages in certain children can produce hyperactivity which lasts as long as the effect of caffeine stays in the body such type of reaction of hyperactivity in the child will be called as idiosyncratic reaction then we have psychological food intolerance which includes food phobias and obsessive compulsive disorders food phobias are very very common you will find typical example will be deeply religious completely vegetarian uh, person who has always lived in a vegetarian surrounding suddenly when that person moves to an area in which raw non vegetarian food is being prepared you will find that person develops a kind of intolerance phobia to that food and even if you mask that food and somehow that smell of that food or the taste of that food finds its way into the person inadvertently it will produce a intolerance reaction that is called as food phobias food phobias are very common in nature and uh, various it may or may not be related to dietary habits this was just one example that i gave you then we have migraines which can also cause food tolerance in certain patients migraine with aura has a higher incidence of developing food intolerance than migraine without aura so this is the first category where food intolerance occurs related to host factors second category is those which are related to food factors first is there can be infectious organisms in the food which you have taken contaminated food these bacteria these pathogens can produce intolerance and so obviously they will respond to appropriate antibiotic or antiparasitic therapy so organisms which can produce this include e coli staph aureus clostridium perfringens shigella salmonella botulism yersinia enterocolitica and campylobacter jejuni the second category includes toxins toxins like histamine are typically produced whenever there is combroid fish poisoning what is combroid fish the tip there are categories of fishes many of you uh, like eating fish i'm not talking to vegetarians but many of the people they like eating fishes so what exactly is combroid there are multiple varieties of fishes which are available one category is combroid fish and the typical example of that is tuna fish tuna is one combroid fish another example is merkel fish so both tuna and merkel if they are spoiled they it leads to the release of histamine in that spoiled fish and when certain people they tend to consume that spoiled old unpreserved fish they de develop combroid food poisoning this combroid food poisoning really leads to the release of histamine producing food intolerance so that is called as combroid poisoning related 
food intolerance. Similarly, shellfish poisoning can lead to the release of sexy toxin and that can also produce food intolerance in the patient. Then we have drugs like caffeine which can produce intolerance. There can be tyramine. Tyramine is present in all these processed cheeses. Theobromine which is present in chocolate and tea. Tryptamine which is present in tomatoes. Benzoic acid in citrus fruits that can cause perioral flare in some of these patients. And then contaminants like heavy metals, antibiotics and pesticides can also produce food intolerance. So this is the first category, food intolerance. Let us move towards second category which is immune mediated. We call them as food allergies. Food allergies can be either IgE mediated or non-IgE mediated. So first category will be IgE mediated. This will include cutaneous reactions on consuming a food to which the person is allergic. Cutaneous reaction will be in the form of urticaria, angioedema, mobiliform rash and flushing. It can be in the form of GIT leading to oral allergy syndrome. What exactly is oral allergy syndrome? You will find that certain children when they consume a substance to which they are allergic, within a few minutes of eating that substance, they will develop perioral and lip swelling. They will develop gum swelling, which can even progress to angioedema. I can very well understand what oral allergy syndrome means because I have been a victim of it once. I was allergic, as I told before, I had once become allergic to prawns and I was not initially allergic to prawns till 18 years of age. Afterwards, I became allergic somehow. And whenever now I consume uh, prawns or something, anything which has touched prawns, I immediately get perioral lip swelling, gum swelling. And once I landed up in emergency room uh, where I needed all that masala, including epinephrine and uh, fluids because my BP had fallen down. So oral allergy syndrome is mainly involving your lip swelling. Whenever you have a food allergen, coming in contact with the oral mucosa. GIT anaphylaxis is the another form of food allergy. Third is respiratory features which includes acute rhinoconjunctivitis and bronchospasm. It includes generalized food allergies like anaphylactic shock and exercise induced anaphylaxis. Second category are mixed reactions of food allergies which can be IgE mediated. They can be IgE mediated as well as they have a non-IgE mediated form. So first is cutaneous reactions like atopic dermatitis and contact dermatitis. You have GI forms like allergic eosinophilic esophagitis and gastroenteritis. You have respiratory reactions like asthma. Third category are non-IgE mediated. Most of the non-IgE mediated forms are mediated by T cells. So they are mediated not mostly by T lymphocytes. So this is an important point that you can remember. So cutaneous forms will include contact dermatitis and dermatitis herpetiformis. It will include celiac disease, food protein induced enterocolitis and proctocolitis. More about it we will be discussing in later. And respiratory ones like Heiner syndrome. What is Heiner syndrome? Food induced pulmonary hemocytrosis. 